Five. I'm Tess Protesto. And I'm Paul Richards, and this is Back to Basics. Woohoo! I think it's episode 29-ish. Episode 29, yeah, <laughs> you said 28 last time. We have to put that in the lower third so we can keep ourselves uh, remembering. In fact, the lower third has, why don't we just remove it because there's a one spelling error in there. But we're bringing audio into PTZ Optics cameras with the 3.5 millimeter input. Uh, a couple different ways to do it. We can bring in audio via RTSP, bring in audio, line level audio, into our, mic uh, into our cameras. And that means that either the microphone needs to have some type of amplification or it's coming from a mixer. And it goes into the camera. We're going to talk about a couple different use cases for this. We've got a presentation to kind of show you the IP interface, which is going to be essential for setting this up. And we're going to talk about the ways to bring in the audio and then output the audio from the camera. Sounds good to me. So we have a Z cam here. We also have uh, multiple PTZ optics models. Tess, can you show this one up close to the PTZ, uh, the Z cam here? I want to show this up close. So just down a little and back a little. There we go. Perfect. Up, forward a little. All right. So do you it. guys see the line in input? That is a 3.5 millimeter input. Oh, let me just plug this into it. Let's see, can you plug that in? Yes. So there it is there, 3.5 millimeter. So that is how we are going to get the audio into the camera. Now the same can be said for the PTZ Optics Z cams and um, box cameras. They're all kind of the same. They all have the line in. They all have feature. the line in. Okay. Now before you wrap that up, I want to show this not really super custom cable, but a cable that is going to be very helpful for a lot of us. This is a female XLR to male 3.5, and I picked this up on Amazon. It was just about um, maybe $15, and it works perfectly for bringing in higher end microphones like this, Audio Technica. This is a condenser microphone. Uh, the Audio Technicas, this is the AT8035, very popular boom forming. Uh, boom microphone. It's a condenser microphone. So now we can just plug this right in to the back and then plug it directly into the PTZ Optics camera via line in and we can get a really nice audio and this is how we bring in the audio um, from our green screen area which we'll show you that later That is in how the show. we bring in the audio from the green screen area. Yeah. Okay. So same thing whether you're looking at a PTZ Optics Z cam or a PTZ camera um, we can bring in the audio right here. Now let's talk about setup and the options. So PTZ Optics has two different, uh, three different really camera models. We have the SDI models, which feature SDI, HDMI, and IP streaming. The audio for these models will embed onto the RTSP and RTMP streams. We'll talk about the differences briefly. The HDMI stream not the SDI. The SDI it does not uh, embed onto. If you need to embed audio into the SDI, you need to use a third party box that will take the SDI video out of the camera and embed your audio signal onto the SDI and then send it to the, your, whichever location you're going to. So the two, basically every model can do two um, outputs. So we'll do Ethernet and HDMI with these. The USB models, the USB 3.0 models, uh, instead of having an SDI here, they have a USB 3.0 audio input. That will embed the audio into the USB 3, perfect for web conferencing and Skype, for example. Um, so we'll talk about some examples on how to use this, and I want to share with you, um, Tess, you have control of this here, really the quick audio though, settings. Puzzle piecing this together for me, because I'm kind of learning this too. So if you're plugging the line in, and then, okay, so you're getting audio into the camera. Yeah. So you, the things you were just describing are the ways to then grab the audio back out and put it into your computer or yes, into your, your production. your computer, your okay. production. So you need the in, but then you also have options for the audio out. Yes. And so far we have audio over HDMI, mm -hmm. audio over USB. Yes. Are we there with SDI yet? No SDI. No SDI yet. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you for the clarification. So th those are that, and then right here we have a little presentation we'll show you. We'll show this uh, large on the screen if we can. And this is going to show you how to kind of go into your camera and make sure that it's all working and all of your audio settings are set up properly. Do I have control or? Yep, that's, that's your secondary monitor there. So Thank the you. first thing is you can choose your audio type. We have options between AAC. Or actually, just AAC is the only option. Is we that can, al always true or yeah, is there that, something weird going on? Yeah, that's always going to be okay. the option. Um, we have 
two different sample rates you can choose from. And then you can choose your bit rates. The okay. higher the bit rate, the higher the quality. So let's let's go up to 256K. Really? I feel like, what what would normal be? 90, 96? 96 is like CD quality. Okay. And then, or maybe even SD, less. Is that what that means? CD? Mm. What is it's the difference? High definition is for video. Okay. Audio is just kind of... CD? Yeah, like CD quality. Like, like, a, like a C. Remember you used to buy CDs back be, in the day? Oh, okay. So 128 is really... Really MP3. The sweet spot. And then 256 is even better. Okay, cool. So the, so the, the better, the, the Depending better. Depending on how much bandwidth you have. Or some, yeah, that will, I mean, okay. people aren't usually too worried about bandwidth with audio, but it is there as an option. If you have video of two, then yeah. it's like balancing it. Balancing. Okay, so um, line in. Line in is the only way to get audio into these cameras. We mentioned that. Just a simple, simple reminder there. And then you have volume levels. You can go from negative 97 all the way up to 30. So we have this on max. Because why not? Why not? We're already bringing the audio in. And you can control it a little, tweak it a little bit with your production. So we could turn it down. Let's say we'll turn it down to 20, for example. Um, and you want them to be even because it's the left and right. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to be weirdly different. And then we just hit apply. And we're all good. So if we go over to network, the other portion of this um, for those of you that are doing RTSP streaming or RTMP streaming, briefly wanted to mention RTMP streaming is what you want to use when you're streaming outside to the cloud. So whether you're going to YouTube or Facebook or DeCast or some content delivery network, you're sending your audio and video to them. In that case, we want to use the RTMP settings if we scroll down just a little bit here. we can see that we have quite a few different options. We can do on and off for the stream in general, which right now we have them off. And the reason why we have them off is because we may actually want to, um, for example, if you turn that on and you reboot the camera, it will start streaming to YouTube or Facebook. So um, this is also integrating with the way that we previously discussed streaming directly from the PTC Optics cameras. Yeah, which was, was that our last show? Might have been. It might have been two shows it, ago. I think it was the last show. Yeah, last show we talked about using this. Now we're talking about actually um, t ticking these boxes, video and audio. You want me to tick them? Yep, go ahead and tick them. We're not going to turn it on. I think we just made up that word. <laughs> we're tick them? We're going to go ahead and tick them. Let's tick them. Uh, so we've ticked them. We've turned it on. We would hit apply and we would reboot the camera Is in that order what you to get do? the... No, we, no don't, we don't want to go ahead and do this just, just yet. Um, but that, we're just showing this. Um, I, that would be the ideal way to do it. Now, RTSP. RTSP, we don't need to touch any of that. It automatically is, you can pull it up on the camera automatically. And um, or with RTSP streaming, um, basically you just take the IP address of the camera slash one for the HD stream or slash two for the SD stream. And let's say you're using vMix or Wirecast or the TriCaster or even VLC media player. You would open up a, me a new media stream, even OBS. I believe we showed that two weeks ago. I think we showed Facebook streaming two weeks ago, and then we showed OBS last week. Oh, yeah, you're right. And it's all ties together because if you're using RTSP streaming with OBS, mm -hmm. then um, that would, you, you'd open up a media source and you do RTSP colon slash slash the IP address of the camera slash one or slash two, and you'd pull up the audio and the video automatically. And the audio should be fairly in sync uh, because. Um, they're coming together. The video and the audio are coming together and then streaming to you. You know, if you're really an audio nut, you may find that you need to, you know, delay the audio just a little bit. Now, what is ADTS? Um, test, yes. Google it, because I know it's it's on Google. I was just looking at it. It's some audio dynamic. Let's see what the all-powerful Google has. Abstract data type? Yeah, the abstract data type. No. No, we okay, to, okay, okay. In computer science, an abstract data type is a mathematical model for data types where a data type is defined by its behavior semantics from the point of view of a user of the data, specifically in terms of possible values, possible operations on data of this type, and the behavior of these operations. Whew, nobody's so, going to understand that. With ADTS, we're going to have to fact check ourselves on the Friday show for that one. Perfect. Um, we, have our we will have to do a fact check because I can't remember what that was. I forgot to, to figure that one out, Mike. But... Um, 
That's a good question. And we've got a lot of questions. We need to fact in. check that one. So let's let, let's start hitting up the questions. It's two ten. Um, two microphones that I recommend, by the way. One is the Rode mic. This is the Rode mic um, because it has any microphone that you can see. Actually, you can turn it on, meaning it's it's powered and it can create a line level feed. That will work with the cameras most likely. These Audio Technica microphones. Um, while you don't see a power um, device on it, if you open it up, you'll see oh, that man. it has inside secret of it... Secret layer of batteries. A secret layer, it has a battery. So it will it, it will accept phantom power, which would be from a, uh, a mixer, or if it there's no phantom power, these more expensive higher-end microphones will uh, output a line-level signal and they'll work with our cameras. All right, so let's see what Steve has to say. Concerned about the level control of the mic going into a line-in, am I correct that there is no mic preamp in the unit? There's no preamp in the unit. That's why the mics themselves have the ability to have, um, you know, I don't know if you really call it a preamp. Would you call that a preamp, mic? The ability to turn that on? Um, I'm not sure if you would call that a preamp, but every mic that I've seen that has the, the like, so just a regular mic that you plug in won't work. What mm. will work, which is interesting, and I wanted to bring this up, is you can plug in your phone, mm. right? If you don't have a new iPhone, by the way, if you've got a new iPhone with a Thunderbolt adapter, you need to get the Thunderbolt to 3.5 adapter, which I've already lost all the ones I've, that came with it. But you would, you could plug in your phone. so case study real quick and we'll, we will dump and jump into the questions. One of the things we've been talking a lot about uh, with a lot of people is taking these cameras, putting the RTMP uh, content delivery network information in for the client. Uh, one person was helping uh, funeral homes live stream a celebration of a, of a life as a funeral. And what they would do is they'd send the funeral the camera, the camera gets plugged into the network, it's got a, it's got a microphone, and literally they turn it on and that's it. And it starts live streaming. Okay, so right. let's let's dip our toes a little bit into the use cases for this. Somebody commented that they have a 300-person church mm -hmm. that they're accommodating for. Is that going to be a good fit for this? Where is going to be a good fit? Well, um, you know, for a church, for example, if you wanted to have a very simple setup, you could have the RTMP information from this camera and literally turn it on, and it would have some audio pickup. Now, this is not going to be amazing audio pickup from the pastor while he's talking, but it will pick up the room, right? So if you already have a soundboard, a lot of churches already have microphones in the whole soundboard, mm -hmm. you would just take the output from the soundboard... As a line in. As a line into the camera. Mm -hmm. Good job. And then you could stream directly to YouTube or Facebook with great quality audio with the camera and not needing a computer or anything else. Okay, so you're going to need to pull off of your sound system or purchase sound system equipment that would do this or get the best microphone you possibly can that has the ability for the line-in feature, right? Yes. And so for the line-in feature, the, I also mentioned plugging in like a phone or a computer mm -hmm. or something that can output audio into it. The other thing you could think about, now be careful for copywritten material, but if you have non-royalty-free music mm -hmm. and you were live streaming a parade or um, maybe a music, uh, a backstage thing where you just wanted to put some nice audio in the background. Um, you could plug your phone in, have all the video streaming. You know, what if you just, let's say you're streaming the beach. You know, you're just showing beautiful sunsets. Uh, you know, a lot of people have like bird cams or mm -hmm. things that you not necessarily want to capture the audio of At the Terrapin beach. Cove. Yeah, a, 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 turtle, a turtle camera. Um, you could have custom music being pumped in, embedded into your stream, going to YouTube or Facebook, and without needing a computer at all. Nice. Very cool. So this isn't excluding any large area. What do you mean by that? I originally had pictured this only sufficing for a small space. This isn't limited to a small space, the setup that we're discussing. Yeah. No, I mean, the PTZ cameras were 20x optical zoom can zoom in about 100 feet, 75 feet. Um, so, you know, that's a pretty large space. Listen, I'm not worried about the camera, honey. 
You're worried about, I'm worried about the microphone. The microphone, yes. Well, these microphones here, they really are meant to be six to eight feet away from the person. These Audio Technicas, these are really great, but you and I know, we were yeah. playing with it. You gotta get pretty close to this yeah. thing. Um, now, you do have settings in the camera that we talked about to boost the signal, but you know, these aren't for very far away. Or the si but the soundboard, that the soundboard would, be would be a, a good a al alternative. Yes. Okay. Or like we said, if you're just live streaming the ocean or whatever, or something that you want to add your own audio on top, you know, you don't need to have to worry about microphones or a soundboard. You're just plugging in an MP3 player. Um, I saw the question about SDI in the future. Um, we are planning a new camera model um, that's going to be supporting broadcast frame rates, uh, most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that SDI audio embedding these. would it would be nice to have it on that that model. I haven't heard anything specifically about it. So currently, if you're planning a project, look into an audio embedder for with SDI video. Um, that is our professional option for au embedding audio into SDI. I don't have one here. I've never uh -huh. tested one, but I could see why you'd want to use that. Okay. Mark is saying audio data transport stream. Audio data transport stream. So that's what it is. I think that's what Not it is. exactly sure exactly how that applies to the camera just yet, and we're going to do a fact check on that <laughs> next week. We're or learning Friday something new about the these holiday products show. Fact, every day ourselves. Mike, uh, don't forget the holiday show. Uh, you know, we'll have a reveal of that. A reveal of that, well, okay. Well, it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. In order to stream what I need to have a stream provider. Well, YouTube or Facebook, right? YouTube or Facebook. Cut the test, cut the test. If it has a battery or AC plug in it, then it, it is preamp. Okay, Yuta uses it for weddings as well. If it's my only camera for dancing, I use the audio, audio line in to get the audio, which is hooked up to my, and we've been cut off by Facebook for my wireless transmitter and receiver. Sorry about that. For your wireless, tra uh, so in order to. So we have a road mic and a real tech. An, an audio tech. Audio tech. <laughs> Getting confused with all the different stuff here. Okay, soundboard, Gene says soundboard for the main audio feed and using the PTZ optics, mic for the crowd noise, and do a mix on vMix to include both audio channels. So you get that ambiance of the crowd. Yes, that's a great use case for this. Um, someone that I know, uh, you, know you can also um, uh, use fiber. So we were working with the NASCAR drivers and all they wanted was to hear the car go zoom, but it was like a thousand feet away from the mm -hmm. production truck because you know how large and expansive the uh, NASCAR races can be. So they would put the cameras and actually have a fiber extension uh, that would convert HDMI to fiber and we'd embed the audio onto HDMI. Now, one of the things I have to do, Tess, is I have yeah. to show how to, there is one part in the PTZ Optics cameras that you do need to enable in order to get um, the HDMI feed to work. So I'm just going to come, let's switch sides. I am going to jump into your computer. And what I'm going to do is this I'm going to. This is my good side, anyways. I'm going to log into um, a PTZ Optics camera on our network. And to do that, you just type in the IP address. I'm going to type in admin. Into admin, your web browser. Into the web browser. And the form pops it up. pulls you right type in. in. Admin, admin. We'll save that. And I'm just going to pan just a little bit left or right just so I know which one it is. All right, so I'm controlling that one there. Can you, can you display that one? Yeah. Okay. So oh, there she is. There it is. Now I'm just going to zoom out just a hair. So what I'm doing here, you can see I'm controlling the camera with the web browser here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hit, so we can do this all remotely, which is the beautiful part about it. I'm going to hit, under PTZ, I'm going to hit OSD. I don't want to block. And that's going to open up the OSD menu. And I'm going to go down On screen to, display menu. I believe it's set up. OK. There it is there. Now, under DVI mode, and it, it says HDMI. And that means that we want to embed the audio onto the HDMI. If it's in DVI mode, that means that we um, do not need the audio. We're converting the HDMI to DVI, and DVI does not support audio. So we'll leave that on. That's the only thing you guys need to know about is, is just, just keeping an eye out for that. 
and we'll go back. So you do have to change the setting on your on-screen display menu to HDMI so the audio converts over HDMI. Yes. There we go. All right, cool. So I just wanted to make sure we showed that. So let's roll the credits, and we'll jump right into Q&A, and um, we're going to show a little live demo um, in our in the post show in our green screen area, showing you how to. We're going to plug this using this uh, cable that I have into a Z cam in the front area where we have a green screen setup, uh, the Reflect Media green screen, and we're going to be using that in a virtual set. This microphone embedded onto an RTSP feed through the camera. So a live little live demo for you guys, and um, we'll roll the credits and we'll answer some questions, and then we'll go up front. 